Here's an example of a two-sample F-test. We have the number of calories contained in half-cup servings of randomly selected flavors of ice cream from two national brands. At the 5% level of significance, is there sufficient evidence to conclude that the variance in calories differs between the two brands? We have two data sets for brand A and brand B. Plug in your data sets into list 1 and list 2. And I have those already here. I'm going to use the TI-84. Very similar for the other style of TI calculators. You go to your stat app, into edit, and then enter your list. And it doesn't matter which order, these are independent groups. We're going to set up our hypothesis statement. We're looking at making a claim about a variance. Remember for our notation then, the parameter is sigma squared. We also are looking if there's a difference, right? That would be not equal sign for a two-tailed test. We also have here that alpha equals 0.05. We set up our hypothesis statement. We have our null hypothesis is that the variance for brand A equals the variance for brand B. And the alternative hypothesis would be that the variance for brand A does not equal the variance for brand B. Be careful when doing a one-tailed test that you have the less than or greater than going the correct way. Sometimes it's helpful just to remember that the sign that you want always opens up to the larger group. Not necessarily when you see larger than will it be automatically a right-tailed test when you have two groups. And it really doesn't matter which order that you go in this point, but I'm going to go ahead and find the test statistic next. And the test statistic is pretty short. It's the F distribution, and it's S1 squared over S2 squared. Our text talks about taking group 1 as the variance for the larger group. If you find the two-tailed test using the software, you can actually not worry about which one is in group 1 and which one is in group 2. We don't have the actual values for S1 and S2. There's a couple different ways to do that. I could do one var stats for each one of my groups separately to find that. But I'm going to go straight to my shortcut key. So there's a stat menu here. I'm going to go to the test menu. And it's towards the bottom. It's called 2SAMP F test. On a TI-89, this would be under your F6 shortcut key in your stat app. And it asks for either data or stats. So stats would be if you were already had the standard deviation given to us. Data, we have raw data in our list. So make sure that data is highlighted. Make sure that you have the list set up correctly for list 1 and list 2. If you're in a TI-89, you actually have to have LIST1 and LIST2 for your two list options. Keep the frequency as a 1. The alternative hypothesis sign needs to be changed depending on what you're doing. We were doing a two-tailed test, so make sure you have not equal highlighted. So as you arrow down, make sure it's blinking on there and enter so that's highlighted. Of course, if you're doing a left-tailed test, you do the less than sign. If you're doing a right-tailed test, you do the greater than sign. Go to calculate and hit enter. And what it's going to give us is the standard deviations for each group. So S1 was 33.99. 0, 0.5 and S2 is 30.9166. So when I square those and divide, that gives me my test statistic is 1.2087. And I didn't specify what method when you're going through, but if I was asking for the p value method, my p value would be right here. This p value is definitely bigger than 0.05, so I would have do not reject h naught. I'm going to go through using the critical value and we should get the same conclusion. The critical value, or in this case values, because we have two of them, cannot be found on the tables, at least the left-hand one cannot be found, because it doesn't provide that information in our textbook. So you need to be using a program in your calculator, or Microsoft Excel, or some other online calculator for these values. 
we have a two-tailed test with the f distribution. Remember the f distribution starts at zero. It's not bell-shaped. Zero is not in the middle. We have two positive numbers that we're going to have to find. So think about alpha was 0.05. Half of that goes into each tail. So 0.025 is over here and over here. That means 95% is in the middle. So these are both values of f on the f distribution that we need to find. And then anything with this f in our shaded area would be our critical region. We would reject H0. And if f falls in the middle, we would have do not reject H0. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my calculator, go to my program. And this is the program hopefully you got during my office hours. It's under inverse f for the f distribution and then hit enter. If you're on a T89 at that point it would want a close parenthesis then enter. Area to the right, so think about how much area we want to the right and there's going to be two different values that we have to find. So if I'm over here on the left hand side I have this 95 percent and this two and a half percent all to the right of that point. That would be 0.975 for my area. Our degrees of freedom for group one would be the what we call the numerator degrees of freedom is n one minus one. Our sample size for group one was eight, so that would leave seven degrees of freedom. And degrees of freedom for the denominator would be n two minus one. We had a sample size of ten, so that would be nine degrees of freedom for that one. So we're going to have our degrees of freedom for group one would be seven. I hit enter. Ask for degrees of freedom for group two takes a little while for this program to run. You can see this little thing moving up in here. It means the calculator is thinking. And this is going to return the last number here. 0 0.207 is the critical value that separates between 0 and 0 0.207, 0 0.207 is my critical region. And then I have another one over here on this side. So I would use the same thing again, but this time I'm going to go ahead and hit clear, go back to program, inverse F, start the program, area to the right would be 0 0.025 this time. Same degrees of freedom as before, 7 oops, and 9. And then 4.197 is that area to the right of this point. Then you compare your test statistics. So if I'm looking at this value here, where does it fall on the number line? It's in the middle. So our decision is do not reject the null. And I didn't write it down, but our claim was that there was a difference. So if we don't reject the null, we are not supporting the claim. So there's not enough evidence to support the claim. That there is a difference in the variance of calories in the two <coughs> national ice cream brands. All right, there's an example.